This is the Early Bird Brief, November 2nd, 2023, inside D.C. Number one, the White House believes Netanyahu is on the way out. According to senior Biden administration officials, Joe Biden and White House aides have discussed Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's, quote, short political shelf life, and the administration believes he has a limited time left as prime minister. One Biden official said there's going to have to be a reckoning within Israeli society about what happened. And ultimately, he said the buck stops with Netanyahu. Why it matters. The Biden White House and Netanyahu have been on icy terms since Biden criticized Netanyahu's judicial reforms earlier this year. During Biden's visit to Israel two weeks ago, Biden effectively told Netanyahu he was on his way out. The administration is correct in its underlying analysis that Netanyahu's political career is ending. Even if the Gaza offensive succeeds, it's likely followed by his ouster from office. Number two, Biden bank rules could kill green energy push. The renewable energy industry and lawmakers are warning that new rules proposed by the Biden administration to punish banks for risky investments could collide with the administration's green energy. Representative Sean Kasten, Democrat, Illinois, said the new rules could mean, quote, a massive reduction in the amount of capital available to decarbonize. Why it matters? U.S. energy generation capacity has been flat since 2011, and with fossil fuel plants set to shut down due to new EPA rules going into effect at the end of the year, generation capacity is likely to decrease. If new banking rules tank investment in green energy, there won't be anything to replace it. At least some of that lost generation capacity will be lost. Number three, Biden nominates Asia Czar for Deputy Secretary of State. The White House says Joe Biden will nominate Kirk Campbell, the National Security Council Coordinator for Indo-Pacific Affairs, to become the next Deputy Secretary of State. He previously served as Assistant Secretary of State for East Asian and Pacific Affairs and Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Asian and Pacific Affairs. Why it matters. Combined with the White House announcement that Biden will meet with Chinese President Xi Jinping this month, which may be up in the air now, this appointment reveals that the Biden White House is turning its focus on China. The administration's previous action to contain Chinese tech development seems to have failed, and this pivot could be a precursor to the Biden administration focusing more soft power on the region. This pivot is happening as China's best window of opportunity to take military action against Taiwan is opening up. Now we shift to domestic affairs within the United States. The first is Bidenomics brainstorming tour begins. President Biden and his campaign team started a two-week cross-country Bidenomics brainstorming tour in Minnesota yesterday, touting a new touting how a $5 billion investment will help rural communities. Why it matters. This $5 billion in federal spending is aimed at winning over suburban and rural voters, basically. As polls show, voters are not embracing Bidenomics. So this is basically a propaganda tour to help him with his election bid in 2024. The second item, the Treasury debt binge threatens U.S. finances. The U.S. Treasury Department said yesterday it plans to gradually increase the size of its debt auction and will need one more quarter of debt increase to meet its financing needs. The Treasury will sell $112 billion in quarterly refunding next week, consisting of $48 billion in three-year notes, $40 billion in 10-year notes, and $24 billion in 30-year bonds. Why it matters. This Treasury announcement comes when government bond yields are around their highest level since 2007, U.S. Treasury Secretary Yellen failed to lock in long-term debt at near record rates in 2021, which billionaire investor Druckenmiller said the, quote, biggest blunder in the history of the Treasury. Unless rates drop or Congress lowers spending, expenses on interest alone will make up a bigger share of federal spending crowding out needed expenditures. Goldman Sachs, no immediate artificial intelligence economic benefits. Goldman Sachs analysts wrote in a research note that artificial intelligence will boost global economic growth and productivity, but not until later this decade at the earliest. Why does that matter? Goldman Sachs analysts also forecasted how AI could displace workers, but they likely underestimated these labor impacts on economic growth and productivity and the human toll that it will take 
likely increase spending on pharmaceuticals and mental health service for employees put out of work by AI. Aside from labor impacts, widespread AI adoption could quickly force other economic changes, including the fast tracking of nuclear energy to power AI data centers that will demand a large amount of electricity. So finally, we shift to geostrategic issues. Kushida building new Asian allies. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida is heading to the Philippines for a pre-ASEAN summit meeting with Filipino leader Ferdinand Marcos Jr. The two leaders are expected to discuss regional security issues, reaffirm their strategic partnership, and discuss economic and cultural exchanges. Why it matters. The Japanese Prime Minister's visit comes just before the Japanese-hosted ASEAN summit this month. The Reciprocal Access Agreement gives credence to China's concerns about Japanese intervention in Southeast Asia. Kishida is likely building a regional coalition to oppose Chinese influence in the region and aggression over territorial disputes. If Japan does not come to Taiwan's aid, Southeast Asia and Japan will be frontline nations for China's next wave of expansion. This is a key issue for the U.S. because we have mutual defense treaties with both the Philippines and Japan. Next. Far C CSG exercises is another type of squeeze. The Chinese Shandong Carrier Strike Group, CSG, is conducting another Far Sea exercise about a month after its most recent one. The exercise is happening in the Philippine Sea, southeast of Taiwan. Numerous land based aircraft joined the CSG for this exercise. Why it matters? The People's Liberation Army conducted a similar exercise in August. These exercises appear to be a new way for the PLA to squeeze Taiwan during its squeeze and release cycles. While monthly two-week deployments will be taxing on the PLA Navy, China's latest carrier, the Fujian, will enter service at the end of the year and may begin conducting similar exercises to relieve pressure on the Shandong while maintaining pressure on the Taiwanese. This would normalize a Chinese CSG presence on the eastern side of Taiwan, which degrades early warning and prepositions them to intercept any potential U.S. Navy interventions. And finally, in the geostrategic realm, Egypt opens the Rafah border crossing with Gaza. Egyptian officials opened the Rafah border crossing with Gaza, allowing foreigners and seriously wounded civilians into Egypt. The limited opening of the sole path out of Gaza came after Hamas released four hostages and Israeli military forces rescued one Israeli soldier captured by Hamas during the 7 October raid. Israeli armored units advanced deeper into Gaza on Wednesday while Israeli Air Force jets struck high-level Hamas targets across the territory. Why it matters? Israel still retains the advantage in its war against Hamas. Despite Yemen declaring war on Israel and much talk, tough talk from Turkey, Iran, and a number of Iran-backed militia groups, no significant third-party intervention in the conflict has materialized. Countries and groups that have declared solidarity with Hamas are rapidly approaching the put-up-or-shut-up moment of the conflict. If they fail to come to Hamas's aid and allow it to be destroyed by Israel, they will likely lose significant credibility with the Islamic extremist street, a small silver lining that could have larger long-term ramifications on future Middle East geopolitics. That wraps up the early bird intel briefing for November 2nd, 2023.